So we derived inverse demand functions. Uh, is it clear, or you want me to go through that once once again? The second. Okay. I'll just write that. So we go for the fir to the first equation and express P two from here, huh? new P two, or express from uh, equation one. Um, will be Q one plus two P one minus two hundred, right? Now I take this P two and insert it here to this equation, to the second one. So Q two is equal to one hundred fifty minus two. Here instead of P two, I write something that I got from the first equation. Mm -hmm. It will be Q one plus two P one minus two hundred and plus P one. So look here. Now I have. Um, Q2, Q1, and P1. Mm -hmm. So 1P, 2 Qs. Therefore, I can uh, find the relationship between P1 and 2 Qs, right? So that will be P1 equal to 553. Yes, yeah, so you see that will be. 2 to 200, 400, plus this 150, f and it will be 3p1, right? So then if we express that, we get 2 over 3q1 minus q2 over 3. So this is my first demand function. This is my second demand function, right? Mm -hmm. So again, to summarize how we approach that, from first equation, I express P2, the, yeah, and then use this P2 in the second equation. From here, I get um, a demand function for second firm. Then I do other way around. I take P1 here, oh, okay, no, P1, P2 from here, substitute it, and again, I get price or demand function for the first company, right? Mm -hmm. Just symmetrically. And now, when I have two convenient demand functions, what do I do? No, not not really, not now. What did you ask in the Okay, what would be my second step? This is Kurno game. Hmm? Yeah. What then? I have two proper demand functions. Yeah, I can find now marginal revenue for both companies. So marginal revenue equal to marginal cost. This is something that you should remember, okay, not forever, but at least for the next week. Yeah? <laughs> uh, whatever you meet in your exam, except of probably your theoretical questions. Yeah? Please try to find this. Whatever you do, always do this. Always try to approach. Mm -hmm. The only thing that, uh, depending on what is your initial settings, the way here might be different, yeah? But everything after is always the same, right? Mm -hmm. So marginal revenue, firm one, what it will be? I take this demand function, right? Yeah? Apply it by the strip rule at this place and treat this as a constant, right? Mm -hmm. So 550 over three minus four over 3q1 mm -hmm, minus q2 over 3. And now I equate it to marginal cost, and it's equal to 10. Mm -hmm. uh, what it gives me? From here, I can find the relationship between q1 and q2. Uh, and this is our vanilla best response curve, right? So q1 is equal to 130 minus q2 over 4. Mm -hmm. Now I find marginal revenue of second firm. Take this demand function. Mm, no, not this one. I made a mistake here. It was, should be this one, right? Mm -hmm. uh, 
500 over 3 minus 4 twice step rule in this place q2 minus 1 over 3 q1 and is equal to marginal cost equal to 10. From here again I can find relationship between q2 and q1 but now that will be reaction curve of second company. Mm -hmm. So q2 is equal to 117.5 minus q1 over 4. Mm -hmm. Tada! We are almost done. Only to find Nash equilibrium now. Mm -hmm. Take this thing, substitute to this equation, and I get equilibrium quantities. Unexpe unexpectedly good numbers. Q1 is equal to 90, and Q2 is equal to 160. Now I can take these two Qs, um, use them in demand functions in order to find P1 and P2, right? So P1 will be 70 and P2 will be 30. Mm? Um, so now we can, um, we have some demand function marginal, so we want to compare that. No, we don't just don't want to compare that. We just want to find this uh, new equilibrium. Mm -hmm. All right? Clear? So you see, even though it's not straightforward task, we have something different. Cournot with two demand functions, but simple logic that if I have Cournot game, I want to get first of all inverse demand function. Yeah? To have dependence P on the left hand side, Q's on the right hand side. This is first step. Then from here I can derive marginal revenues and then everything is simple, right? What about question two? Okay, discuss prisoner's dilemma game, when you compete over prices, um, normal forum game, how we can change the rules of the game by collusion to improve the outcome. I think it's fairly straightforward task. Yeah? You write, you draw a table, you put the outcomes, then you get prisoner's dilemma. It looks like uh, dominant strategies are always Okay, what is prisoner's dilemma? How, what does it mean to discuss prisoner's dilemma? You always start with um, the table mm -hmm. and then you say, okay, if this is a prisoner's dilemma, what is the main point? Is that Nash equilibrium, or okay, you can start always with demand function, um, dominant, dominant strategies, right? Here you will s find this, that uh, defect is always dominant strategy for both firms. And there is, uh, only one Nash equilibrium. And this Nash equilibrium is always defect, defect, right? But then you go one step further and, and say, but both companies can earn more if they uh, cooperate, right? Mm -hmm. And this will be like collude, collude. But uh, both have very strong incentive to defect at one point, yeah? because immediately it can uh, increase its profit. Mm -hmm. So and then the, profit, uh, the, the main problem is how to sustain this collusion. Both have incentives to deviate, but on the other hand, both have incentives to collude, yeah? because it and can um, bring the low, higher profit in the long run. Uh, point B, how can you change the rules of the game by collusion to improve the outcome? Hmm? In right. If we don't have dominant strategy. In prisoner's dilemma, you yeah. always have. I mean, pure dominant strategy. In prisoner's dilemma, you always have. Always? Always. If this is the right prisoner's dilemma. Yeah. So, how to say? Um, this type of games, 2 over 2, there are plenty of different stuff. For example, you can have outcomes like this. What is this? This is pure coordination game. If we coordinate, yeah, we are always better. If we miscoordinate, uh, we are worse off. Yeah? It can be something different. You can get 1, minus 1, um, minus 1, 1, minus 1, 1, 1, minus 1. This is something that is called zero-sum game. Mm -hmm. So something that I win, you always lose. Mm -hmm. So in this case, say, here we have um, I guess it will be, it should be at least two 
Nash equilibrium. In this case, we don't have any. Yeah? Here we can only find mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. So this is like second type of game. And then there is something else called prisoner's dilemma. Mm -hmm. And this is type of games where your outcomes is always like that. Say it will be 25, 25, uh, 20, 20, then 15, 30, and 30, 15, right? Mm -hmm. So like if this is defect, this is collude, this is collude, this is defect. Prisoner's dilemma. This is this strategic situation where you always have only one uh, Nash equilibrium, and it, it will be only in this point. Mm -hmm. These two are dominant strategies. Um, no, 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 no. Okay, this was a mistake. It should be 20 here, right? Mm -hmm. And 25, yeah. 25 here. Okay. So in fact, this is something that we get without collusion. This is something that we get with collusion, mm -hmm, right? Uh, these are two dominant strategies. Therefore, game is strongly inclined to have this outcome. But we want this. Mm -hmm. This is type of game that called prisoner's dilemma. If you change the outcome structure a little bit or a lot, you can get some other game mm -hmm, that will have another outcome, another equilibrium, and so on. But if you have a proper prisoner's dilemma, it always looks like that. And there is, uh, well, if you have dominant strategies, you always have an equilibrium in dominant strategies. And the equilibrium in dominant strategies cannot be mixed. It's always pure. You see? Mm -hmm. So say if we change the structure, say, due to some punishment, or um, say we say, we want to change the rules of the game to sustain collusion. And we say, OK, if you defect, you get, say, you get punished. And you have to account for losses. So therefore, here, you will have, for example, outcome 17. Mm -hmm. We just say that the penalty will be 13 units, right? So you have to subtract them. Now look at this game, if we sol solve it. Um, Say, if you go here, I'm better off like that. If you go here, I'm better off here. If um, you go, I'm better off here. Go defect. Go. So listen, in this case, I have already two Nash equilibrium. Mm -hmm. Look, this is one of those. It immediately tells me that it's not prisoner's dilemma anymore. I changed the rules of the game such that I have another game, and I have another outcome. Mm -hmm. You see? So this is the, qu the answer. How can you change the rules of the game by collusion to prove the outcome? I say, OK, I assign some penalties. Say in this game, penalty is 13. You can imagine something else. You can say that, OK, if we sustain collusion, you can increase uh, payoff here. So you can invent something. But to change the rules of the game, it means to change the outcome. Somehow to change the structure of the game. Instead of prisoner's dilemma, now I get something different. At least in this case, uh, defect is not a dominant strategy anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so is it OK with this exam? Can we go on? Well, this is exam from 2007, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. In Norway, we have two firms competing for subscribers in the mobile phone market with a market share 80%. Consider two profit maximizing firms. 
Mm -hmm. Production cost is 20 per unit. Then we have demand for a substitute product, the same cost structure. A is to derive and draw best response curves um, that compete over prices in the Bertrand game. But again, we have two demand functions, right? So this is the uh, Bertrand game with differentiated products. Mm -hmm. And B is compute the Nash equilibrium prices and profits and discuss why this is the solution. OK, by the way, why Nash equilibrium is the solution? Right. Uh, what is Nash equilibrium? This is a situation when both players are best responding to each other. Mm -hmm. It means that none of them can do better, mm -hmm. given the strategy of another one. But if it's simultaneously like that, so it's not possible to get something, something better. Mm -hmm. So this is, say, so to say, the best outcome or the most probable outcome. Well, A and say B all together. We find Nash equilibrium, right? So Q1 is equal to OK, what should I do? You help me. Say, as always, we put on shoes of one of the players. Say, now we play for firm one. Mm -hmm. And I want to find a best response curve. As long as I am playing Bertrand game with differentiated products, my best response curve should be a relationship between two prices. Mm -hmm. So, um, how to start? Yeah, I have to change the place of these two st things. Or alternatively, I can immediately maximize profit from here. Mm -hmm. So, demand for first firm will be 200 minus Q1 over 2 plus P2 over 2. Mm -hmm. As long as I have this demand function, I can apply device ST rule. Mm -hmm. 200 minus Q1 plus P2 over 2 equal to marginal cost, equal to 20. I find Q1. This will be 180 plus P2 over 2. And I can immediately equate that to this part, right? 400 plus P2 minus 2P1. In this e uh, equation, I have only P2 and P1. So I can find best response curve. P1 is equal to 110 plus P2 over 4. Mm -hmm. Um, now I do the same for firm 2. Price 2, I express this stuff from this equation. It's equal to 100 plus P1 over 2 minus Q2 over 2. Mm -hmm. Marginal revenue of second firm, 100 plus P1 over 2 minus Q2 is equal to marginal cost and e equal to 10. From here I find Q1 um, 80 plus P1 over 2 and is equal to this right hand side of this equation. Mm -hmm. 200 plus P1 minus 2P2. Uh -huh. From here I find At least it's, it's, yeah, it's right here. So P2 is equal to 60 plus P1 over 4. 
I have two best response scores. Mm -hmm. And I can find Nash equilibrium. Yeah, by the way, derive and draw. There is, I think, no need to draw. Yeah? It will be for sure something like that. Yeah? Uh, in Bertrand games, it's on, only always like that. In Cournot games, it is usually something like that. Right? So, Nash equilibrium for this game is P1 is equal to 133, 33. Mm -hmm. And P2 is equal to 93, 93. And I know, but I have got some surprisingly nasty numbers here. Am I the only one? This one. OK. Then Q1 is 22667. Q2 is 16467. And my, my profits. Profit 1 was something horrible. And price two, ten, seven, five. Doesn't look familiar. Yeah. Okay. Good. So we are done with A and B. Firm now now considers a first mover advantage. Find the solution in this Tuckleberg game, prices and profits, and explain why firm one will have no incentive to play this game. Mm -hmm. So from here, we can expect that my profit should go down, right? Of firm one. So, Stackelberg game. Once again, we have something different from initial settings of Stackelberg game. It's not a Cournot, and the products are differentiated. But still, logic is the same. We take the best response function of the second firm and insert it into the demand function of the first form, firm, right? Um, so this thing I can use without any change. Mm -hmm. So P2 equal to 60 plus P1 over 2. And this is follower. What does my leader do? Takes this and use it in the demand function, right? So that will be P1 equal to 200 minus Q1 over 2 plus 30 plus P1 over 8. Mm -hmm. And then from here, I get my P1 equal to 26857 minus 4 over 7 q1 no have anyone solved this because really numbers are scary <laughs> doesn't look very convincing but still so then i can find from here marginal revenue mm -hmm. right again the leader does not respond to anything that's why he simply takes his residual demand curve or something that he expects to be his resi residual demand uh, function, and then maximize the profit. Um, marginal revenue is this 262857 minus 8 over 7 Q1, and is equal to marginal cost. It's equal to 20. From here, I find quantity 2125. And then I can find price of the first product and price of the second. Mm -hmm. 95 and say 36. Mm -hmm. And from here I find Q2 
again I just take two prices Q substituted to the demand function and I get Q equal to 150 7 and 1 mm -hmm. now I can calculate profits new profits for both companies for the first one I got 25 8 Oh, 3, 56. And P2 is equal to 11, 3, 5, 7, 39. Mm -hmm. Unexpectedly, even though we expected that, uh, at least from the way how the question is formulated, I would expect that the profit of first firm would decrease. But it's not the case. Huh? It increased marginally a little bit, but still it is increased. Look, this is 800, there is 600. So now you suggest me, why there is no incentive to play this game? No, look at the profit of another guy. Yes, it will increase the profit of competitor. First of all, but in addition to that, look at quantities produced and you suddenly realize that market share of second guy increases. Uh -huh. Yeah, your competitor is will is winning your customers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So sort of very realistic example. Though I can increase marginally my profit, I lose market share. In in the long run, it's nothing good about that. Mm -hmm. um, further, both firms have to. A question, no? Is not profit that matters? Profit that matters, but in the long run, market share as well matters. Do you want us to comment mm -hmm. things like that, even though it doesn't ask specifically for comments? It is asked why firm one will have no incentives to play this game. Okay. This is a question. Otherwise, don't bother about okay. comments. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't give an extra point. That's so not, an, ex guy, it's not an exam <laughs> in... Um, Rhetorics <laughs> or debate or something like that. Be very specific. Yeah. Okay. Both firms have a shift in their demand curves, adding 50 in the first element in demand functions, and find new prices and profits in this Bitron game. Mm -hmm. um, okay. It's boring, right? It's so just the same. There. Yeah. It's irritating, you know, you have to spend 20 minutes on your exam to do just the same. Mm -hmm. And what is even more important, you will for sure make a mistake there. Yeah. <laughs> it's always like that, <laughs> at least in my case. <laughs> well, then we go further. Mm -hmm. Find new price. Okay, the reason for playing over prices is that 30 firms have a 20% market share. Yeah, in the beginning it was said that these two, pl two players they have 80% uh, of uh, market share. Mm -hmm. Now we get back, okay, what happened with this other 20? So they underbeat each other in an aggressive price competition. So they drop out. What will be the new solution if so many of the small companies leave the market because of negative profit and the two dominant firms change the rules of the game, competing now over quantities? Mm -hmm. Find Nash equilibrium in this Cournot game, where we have the same demand and cost structures as in the Bertrand game after the shift in demand. So it's very specific where we go in here. Yeah? Find new solution if firm one takes advantage of being first mover. So actually two exercises again. Um, So my new demand functions mm -hmm. So this is again Cournot game with differentiated products mm -hmm. So now you solve exercise, and I carefully listen to you and write down what you tell me to write. What uh, marginal cost? I guess are the same, right? It's twenty for both. Mm -hmm. 
First thing, what should I do now? Cool, no game with differentiated products, two demand functions. So, uh, but before that, how to find this? Inverse demand functions. I want to re-express that in a way to get P on the left hand side and Q on the right hand side. Two Qs, right? Mm -hmm. So how I do that? Take this P1, put it here, yeah? Mm -hmm. And get and what I get. So I have got P2 equal to 950 divided by 3 minus 2 over 3 Q2 minus q1 over 3. Then I do the same for this uh, for the first guy. I take p2, yeah? And put it here. Mm -hmm. From here I get demand for the first product. 1150 divided by 3 minus 2 thirds q1 minus q2 over 3. Mm -hmm. And now I can find reaction functions. Mm -hmm. I apply twice a steep rule for the first firm. This is 50 to 3 minus 4 over 3 Q1 minus Q2 over 3, right? Equated to marginal cost, it's 20. From here I can find relationship between Q1 and Q2. Mm -hmm. And I get Q1 equal to 272.5 minus Q2 over 4. Mm -hmm. And do the same for the second company. Um, no, this was the second. No, it was first. Yeah, second is this one. Mm -hmm. 950 over 3 minus 4 over 3 Q2 minus q1 over 3 and again equal to 20. Mm -hmm. From here I find q2 or best response function. This 222.5 two, two minus q1 over 4. Mm -hmm. So with these two reaction functions I can find Nash equilibrium. I got Q1 equal to 2, 3, 1, 33, and Q2, 1, 6, 4, 67. Mm -hmm. And the prices, P1 is equal to And P2 is my profits was P1 is equal to Compared to the previous, okay, we cannot directly compare that because we haven't have not solved that Bertrand game with this uh, demand functions, right? But I would expect that when we compute our quantities uh, in the Cournot game, at least the profits should be higher, yeah. But the only way to check this is to solve the previous exercise as well. Mm -hmm. Well, the last sentence. Find a new solution if firm 1 takes advantage of being the first mover. So this is a Stuckelberg game in Kurno settings, but with differentiated products. Mm -hmm. Again, something new. The simplest way. The follower has uh, best response curve. So I can use this one, right? Mm -hmm. I take this and substitute into the demand function of the first firm, of the leader. Um, 
this will be p1 this is the end of the story this at least my result q1 then marginal revenue is equal to okay all the, all of these so from here i can find profit maximizing quantity q1 is 247.86 and q2 is 160 54. Find prices. P1 is equal to x4, 58. And price 2 is equal to 1, 2, 7, 0, 2. Mm -hmm. So with this first, uh, first move, the first company definitely managed to get larger market share, right? Mm -hmm. Comparison with to this. Um, and the profits. The first guy gets this thirty-five thousand eight three five and six. Say profit two. So in this case, it looks like he really has has this incentive. Mm -hmm. If he moves first, he increases his profit a bit, right? But another guy actually loses something. Mm -hmm. So in this case, it's like pure advantage. No? He wants to do this. What is exercise two? Summarize the most important models dealing with product differentiation and how they deal with different products con uh, problems concerning product differentiation as business strategy. Well, with you, we haven't gone through the whole chapter, actually. Yeah? We only considered Bitron Games different products. Hmm? Lemon model? Was, yeah. was it in this? No. Yeah, so if there is lemon model, yeah. there's. Uh, okay, it should be here. Yeah? Yeah. What are the different pro problems with uh, product differentiation? You see that the result of lemon model was um, well, if we have. Um, Asymmetric, asymmetric information that say uh, sellers know more than buyers, yeah. And we considered two cases. First case was what if they have the same um, value for the product. Mm -hmm. Then um, it turned out that the only the worst cars could have been sold, yeah. But this equilibrium was still more or less efficient, yeah, because the cars now belong to those who value them the most, but uh, actually they value them the, sa the same. So from efficiency, efficiency point of view, it doesn't matter who holds the car. Is that a seller or a buyer? But because the value is the same for them. But then we changed a little bit and we assigned 20 more uh, percent value for the buyers, right? We said that what if the buyer values the car 20% higher than the seller? Mm -hmm. And then we got another equilibrium point. The, in the equilibrium, it turned out that everything that has a value below average would be sold. Mm -hmm. Everything that is above the average was 9,000, was not sold, sold, right? So we came to the conclusion that asymmetric information, uh, because of asymmetric information, all good cars were driven out of the market mm -hmm, because of absence of information. And in this case, uh, this equilibrium is not efficient. Why so? Because, say, if we take the most expensive car, it costs to the seller, to, he values it to $12,000, right? But if we assign 20 more percent and say this is the value that the buyer puts on this car, it will be 14400 uh, right? So, say, if it was 12000 for seller, mm -hmm. for buyer, it will be 1440, mm -hmm. like 20% value more. Mm -hmm. But in equilibrium, it turns out that uh, these cars, high, high value cars, they were not sold in the market at all mm -hmm. because of asymmetric information. So it means that this expensive car now 
still belongs to the seller. But there is someone on the market who values it, this car higher. Mm -hmm. So it means that this, say, 2,400 are so lost somewhere in the market. Mm -hmm. This value is lost. That's why this equilibrium is not efficient. Mm -hmm. So this is what regarding this. Yeah. And this product differentiation, that was a model with uh, product variety, right? Um, social implications of, of product variety, right? But still, in your exam, I don't think that your questions would be uh, as extensive. Yeah, it should be something more uh, narrow. Mm -hmm. uh, before we start new exercises, let me have a break, right?